now is we recently finished the building behind us as part of the blacksmith shop as an expansion of the buildings here around the Fort Jargo cabin, the trading post. And I'm starting to work on some of the hardware for around the outside of this. Um, we recently completed like the hinges and the, the door hardware. I'm going to have to do some of the window hardware later. And this is going to be one of the simple pieces. It's just uh, something to go on the outside for us to hang our lanterns and lights up. But wrought iron is actually a material. It's like this stuff. kind of looks like steel, but it's a less pure form of steel. It actually has a grain running along it where the impurities do not get worked out. head nail in that um, it's something I need I need a few of to give a little bit extra surface on the head of the nail. Where do you quench them with water? Yeah water. This is a mild steel so I can all I'm doing with quenching is cooling something down. If I was working with a higher carbon steel I could have additional effect on it. But with what I'm working with now all I'm doing is cooling it. If I was really producing nails, I'd have a bunch of pieces of iron in the fire, too many irons in the fire. And so that took from start to finish too much time. But too much time, but I mean uh, that's that's not. Uh... Well, if you'll see the professionals, I mean you were expected to make just hundreds of those a day. Because think of how many nails go into a house. Right. Nails at one time were really quite valuable. Now what are you what are you going to use that for? I'm going to use this on a toke light on a gun. That way, when I set my gun down, it'll have a, it'll have a hard spot to set on the ground. Okay. Big head to it. It's one of the sideways ones. Yeah. We're out here on the wild frontier, so you can't see it in the camera, so you don't even have to imagine all that stuff's not there. Because the blacksmith was out here repairing things mostly. Um, remember, it takes a lot of time and effort to bring things out here. I probably wouldn't just have a bar stock like this. I would have something that was broken that needed repairing, or I needed something and I couldn't wait for the next shopping trip in six months. So I would take it to the blacksmith and they would repair things. Um, coal comes out of the ground, so it's got a lot of things like sand, it's got some sulfur in it. Things that really I don't want in my fire very well. So what I do is coal kind of has to be heated up and those impurities burn out or cook out. You can't really see it very well now, but sulfur will burn out in that nice sulfur smoke. It's a yellow smoke. Forms our acid rain. And um, the sand will actually melt out into uh, like almost a volcanic glass. I don't know if you can see that mess of stuff right there. But what's left behind is called coke. It's kind of like charcoal made out of coal. It burns really nice and really clean. And it'll allow me to reach the temperatures I need to get 
to get the metal soft enough to work. Um, once I've got my coke made, what I want actually burning my fire, it won't burn very well by itself. If I just leave it here, it's not going to go up into a big bonfire. It's actually going to go out of it. So what I have to do is I've got to blow air through it. And that's what I'm doing with this thing over here. This is called a centrifugal blower. Um, it's got a gearbox in here and a fan in here, and that's blowing air. If you think of when you're, if you've got a coal in a campfire, if you blow on it, it turns a brighter orange. That's what I'm doing, but more constantly. If you can see in the fire at all, you get some of that out of your way. If I stop, it gets kind of a dull orange. Whereas if I start turning on the hand handle, it gets a much brighter orange. It's starting to get hot. And my metal is never going to get hotter than my fire. So I do want to get my metal as hot as possible to a certain point. This is uh, called an English style or a farrier style anvil. Um, a farrier is actually somebody who makes horseshoes. And that's what this anvil was originally designed for. If you look at the horn of the anvil, it's actually an oval. It's for building, bending an oval shape around a horseshoe. Um, this, the brand happens to be a Fisher anvil. It was made in 1897. This is what is called a cross peen hammer. The peen is the back of the hammer. It's the part you're not striking with. Um, it's called a cross peen because if you look at it, it goes across the handle of the hammer. Most of these, once you see them, are really pretty easy to understand. I mean, everybody's got a ball peen hammer at home, but hardly anyone ever uses them. It's because the ball is used for metalworking. It was a blacksmith's tool. You use it for shaping the metal. If I hit with a cross peen hammer, it forces the metal this way and this way. If you hit with a ball peen hammer, it forces the metal in every direction. It helps you to bend things. Blacksmith dogs. And they're used for holding metal that is getting hot. The hardies. This one is a cutting cutoff hardy. It's used. It goes in, well, if you could see the top of the anvil, there are a couple holes here. There's a hold, a square hole to hold these tools and a round one for when I'm punching through to go through the metal. And that's pretty much all I got, man. Good. No problem. That's, that's more than enough. That's fantastic.